talk with you a little bit about some shadow work and the areas of creating new visions for ourselves. So creating new visions is something we're constantly being asked to do as we go through transitions and changes in life, or as we just realize maybe we're out of alignment, or maybe we're looking for something new and interesting, exciting to kind of bring in. Um, another reason too is because we can sometimes outgrow the old versions of ourselves. So that would also be another time that you would want to bring the energy of new vision into your space. So there are going to be three areas that we're going to want to focus on this month in order to help us create new visions for ourselves. I think a lot of times when we think about the concept of creating something new for we don't know where to start. And that can be problematic because we really want changes and we really want to create something. But sometimes it's hard for us to know what we want or what that looks like until we can tangibly see it. So there are three different things that um, I'm gonna go over today, three different areas within the shadow work of new vision that I think will help you do this effectively, especially if you're not sure exactly where you wanna go just yet. So the first one that we wanna talk about is we wanna talk about shape-shifting. Now this concept will throw people off a little bit at first because I think when someone says that word or when you hear it, they're immediately images or things like that kind of get conjured up in your mind. So we think of um, things that we've seen like in books, in comic books, in movies, folklore, things like that. So we'll think of vampires, we'll think of werewolves, we'll think of the Incredible Hulk, um, we'll think of witches shape-shifting into different animals, right? Um, so there's a lot of different areas where we might think of this and it can be sort of a negative connotation. Now, the truth is that shape-shifting is a universal archetype. All of us shape-shift in one way or another because our lives are always changing and transforming and transitioning into something else, right? It never stays exactly the same. So in order to go into the next version or season of our lives, there's a little bit of shape-shifting going on. So when you think about it in terms like this, it becomes a little bit more tangible to us than like sitting here going, I can't be a vampire turning into a bat, right? So what does shape-shifting really look like in our lives? Well, it can look like a lot of different things. Sometimes it can be purely physical in nature. We might change our appearance, our hair color. We might get different color contacts. We might get a different wardrobe with a different style. Uh, we might grow taller. We might be shrinking. We might gain weight or lose weight. There's a lot of different ways physically that you can shape-shift. Some are on purpose. Some are because of aging. Um, some are just different you know, things that happen. So there is, is, is that shape shifting. There's also your personal space can transform as well. You might move houses, you might move jobs, you might redecorate. There's a lot of different things that can shape shift around you too. It even qualifies if maybe the tree falls down in your backyard. The backyard is now a different shape. Things are different back there. It is not exactly the same. So what do you do in that new space? So Another thing I think is really interesting about this archetype is one that we all are shapeshifters in some way, shape, or form. Um, whether it's just normal or to the extreme, whether it's done subconsciously or consciously. Some of us like to shapeshift a little more than others, which is where I would maybe categorize people like uh, comedians, people who act, um, things like that, because they are telling you a story. They are transforming not only themselves, but their environment around them. That's another form of shape-shifting, which is interesting. Um, and then you can also get on the negative aspect, too, if we think about it. So um, something really common that people would think that people would recognize is politicians, ultimate shape-shifters. You never know if they're coming or going. Uh, another one would be narcissists because they are always kind of changing their reality to fit sort of their need. So shape-shifting can take many forms. And I think the reason that people are, are really afraid of it or that it's portrayed that way in a lot of like literature, movies, folklore, things like that is because change is inherently very scary. And so when that happened, like nobody likes change. I think I've met like two people in my life that are like, I love change, it's amazing. But most people are afraid of it because it takes us out of our comfort zone. So when we think of the shapeshifter in, in those terms, there's a reason why that fear, that scariness comes up around that transition into something scary, right? Because the transition for us can often be scary. So that's the first area you want to look into as we're looking at new visions, right? Like what version of myself and my environment do I want or need to shapeshift into, 
right? In order to create this new vision. Now, another one we want to look into is going to be in the area of embracing your wildness. And well, what does this mean? Well, embracing your wildness can come in a lot of different forms, but the core kind of importance in embracing your wildness is, is we've all been kind of regulated by society and rules and beliefs that other people put on us, right? Limiting beliefs that we've created. And so our own true inner instincts and nature have kind of been squashed. So a lot of us have a difficult time trying to understand like what we want. We don't even know how to listen to our bodies anymore. We're so disconnected from all the technology and all the things um, and what we should be doing as opposed to what we like intuitively feel like we want or need to be doing. So it's really good to examine those different areas this month. One thing you can focus on is kind of self-awareness and self-growth, right? Like examining yourself introspectively and honestly, like who am I? Where am I holding myself back? Um, and being really aware of the things and skills that you bring to the table and also the negative aspects and qualities that might need some work that you, you kind of need to fine tune a little bit in order to use for your benefit. Another thing is we really want to go dive deep and examine our belief system. Where does our belief system come from? Like who made the rules that are stuck in our head and why? Like where are you like, cause they come from somewhere. We don't just wake up believing something someday. It comes from somewhere and it usually comes from other people. And sometimes as little kids that works for us, but as we grow and evolve into the adults we were meant to be, sometimes those things change. So we are operating from an outdated set of beliefs or rules. So another good thing you can do if you want to embrace your wildness is you really want to look into that. What do I believe? Why? Where does this belief come from? And then figuring out how to rewrite, rewrite that for yourself in a more positive way. Now, the kind of the third and final thing you want to focus on if you're looking at embracing your wildness is you don't want to take anything other people give you just at face value. You want to ask questions. You want to do your research because what you're getting may or may not be true. It may or may not be in alignment with who you are and what you need. So just to blindly accept information from someone else can be very damaging to us. And it also squashes our wildness down a little bit, right? And I think when you really can move in your wildness fully, yeah, you, it might be a little bit confusing for other people because they're not used to seeing that. But what that's also going to do is inspire somebody else to do the same. Like your freedom will release other people. So that's a really great area to work on this month. The third and final area you want to work on in regards to creating new visions for yourself. Now, this is the part where if you get real stuck and you don't know what you want to create, you're like, I don't like what's happening in my life. This isn't working, but I don't know where I'm supposed to go next. What do you do if you're stuck there? Okay, here's the answer. You want to start journeying and manifesting. So when you're journeying, uh, you can do this by yourself if you feel comfortable. I personally have different um, kind of guides and energies that I connect with that give me information. So if you have angels or guides or spe specific deities you work with, that's someone you can go to in this situation and say, hey, I'm not sure where I'm supposed to go. Can you help me? And it's, it's also important not to give them too much direction because when you get too nitpicky, it pigeonholes you into like, they will show you exactly what you're telling them. So going in with an open-ended mindset, I think will give you the most accurate vision or information from them of what you need to be doing or where you're supposed to go. Um, it's really used to kind of inspire you uh, and see, help you see what's possible, right? You don't have to do exactly what they're saying, but it might open up another door, another avenue you haven't thought of before. So that's the first thing you want to do with the journey is really connect to a higher power, connect to source energy, wherever it is that you get that information from on the spiritual side of things and ask them for help. And they will show you, you can use, um, you know, power animals as well. That can also be something if you connect more with that energy, but whoever you normally go to go there and ask, ask for some help. Now, the second thing is, is we want to kind of manifest what we want. And manifesting is a really tricky area for me because I think one, it's not really explained very well. Um, and two, it can be really frustrating for people because there's a lot of roadblocks that we have in place internally that prevent us from manifesting that people don't realize. 
Um, I do have a couple videos up on this site about how to manifest properly. And if you're having issues, what you can do wrong, I will try really hard to remember to put them in the links below if you want to click on them and get some more info on that. Um, but manifesting is also really important too. Like you can't just say like, oh, I want a boyfriend or, oh, I want a million dollars or, you know, whatever it is that you want. Like I want a horse, a boat, a car, whatever, whatever it is that you want for yourself. And then just sit back and wait for it to arrive. That's not traditionally how manifesting works. You have to say that you want it and put that intention out there. And then when the door is open, you have to take effective action. So Remember that when you're manifesting, especially if you're feeling frustrated or it seems sometimes like the rules are like, oh, I just do this and say the thing and then it comes. That's not how it works. Um, but that's really important. A secondary aspect of manifesting is also gratitude. So when you're creating a new vision and trying to do all these things with the journey and manifesting portion, be grateful for what you have because that energy draws more of the same. When we're focusing on all the stuff we're complaining about, it usually the universe is like, oh, she wants to complain. I'll give her something to complain about, right? Or, oh, she really liked what I did there. I'm going to give her some more of that because she really genuinely appreciated it. So that's kind of the, the vibe of where you want to be with, with your gratitude practice. And that can look like whatever it is that you want. So those are, I know it's a lot, but those are the three areas I think are really, really important for doing some shadow work in the area of creating new visions for yourself. If you are feeling stuck and you want to work with me one on one, please go to my website, book a shadow session and let me know this is what you want to work on. And I would love to do that with you. So that's all that I have for you guys. I hope that was interesting. Until next time. Thank you guys so much for watching and have an absolutely beautiful day.